Uh, so this project just involved uh, reed blocks. So this is uh, one way that I can interact with customers where they'll, they'll take the, uh, in this case, four reed blocks out of the instrument and just send me their reed blocks. <clears throat> and, you know, typically they'll come in looking like this. Uh, leather, here you can see curled leather uh, valves on it. Um, wax is uh, old and brittle. Here's a cord block, a similar thing, some of them completely folded over. So, uh, uh, and here's a treble block. Again, in this case, there's even some of them missing, uh, some of the leather, leather valves. So, the process I use is to, uh, you know, remove them all from the reed blocks. You take, uh, clean them all. Uh, if there's any rust that needs to be taken off, I've got some pictures along the way. Uh, even before I started, I know this one had uh, the the shoe of the reed block <coughs> had uh, this flat piece of wood at the bottom had started separating here. So I just had to glue and clamp that up and. Now it's uh, it's back rigid again and working fine. So after cleaning uh, all the uh, reed plates, uh, then they're all revalved. I use the modern plastic valves on this one for uh, a very long, uh, trouble-free life. <clears throat> the small ones are two-layer. Some of the bigger ones are three layers of, uh, of uh, plastic to give them a leaf spring sort of uh, feature to it and uh, I do use the composite on the uh, to make it a little quieter if you just use the plastic on these very large re base reeds you can sort of hear it flapping uh, when they close so this is the modern composite still a couple layers um, but they they're they're quieter um, what other <coughs> improvements did I do I did uh, this one seemed to have the undesirable wah-wah effect on uh, a couple of the notes. So I add a, a treble a crossbar that go, goes between the two treble uh, blocks when it's in the instrument. So the customer, uh, when they get it back, will be able to uh, utilize that. Because the spacing's in the, uh, the same. So what I do when I'm tuning here, so I do coarse tune them in the blocks, but then I will... Uh, actually put them in into a uh, very similar half of an accordion that which will match the customers and then I can tune them uh, on my tuning table in situ uh, so that uh, it'll be properly in tune when it go goes back. <coughs> poker work uh, shell that I use for um, uh, the treble side. So I, I've got a couple of videos I'll even show uh, of me uh, in testing the reeds uh, in my air table setup.
So the low reed changes pitch over time. It's the inner reed. I'm going to try tightening the rivet. Offending one, so uh, tightening the rivet fixed it. Rock solid now. Also added an anti-resonance crossbar uh, between the true treble blocks. Oh, this uh, I did find, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll make sure I start talking after the um, after I play the video. <clears throat> uh, that one of the notes, the high treble notes, was uh, variable. In other words, it even with constant pressure, it would it would start with a with a uh, low tremolo and go to a high tremolo or vice versa. Uh, so the pitch was not consistent. So I did determine that was on the low, the minus reed, not the plus reed. Uh, removed it, uh, rewaxed it. I'm uh, sorry, uh, removed it. And I, what I did is I tightened up the rivet on that particular reed, and that did solve the problem. Uh, of course, after taking it off, tightening the reed with a with a nail set and a hammer, you have to take it back and re-wax it onto the block, put the block back in the test fixture, and I think I show before and after uh, how that fixed that particular problem. Anyway, this will be going back to the customer uh, soon, and I'll just pop it into their uh, their honer instrument at home, and away they go.